Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Father in heaven, you are our light and our salvation. We are grateful for your protection and mercy throughout our lives, especially during the last few months. You are our refuge and strength during times of sorrow and joy. While we are alone and in the presence of others, and also during the periods of illness and good health in our lives, 
Forgive us for any thoughts, words, and deeds that are not worthy of your glory, and help us to speak more kindly and to be more compassionate towards others. We give you praise for your healing touch, for listening to our daily concerns, your precious gift of the Bible that provides a guide as to how we should conduct our lives, and also sending Jesus to save us from our sins. Help us to prepare for the second coming of Jesus and to make good decisions that will determine our destiny. Thank you for the pastoral guidance and technical support leading to the participation in this evening's meeting and I pray that we will be truly blessed by the message. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Gospel is according to St. John chapter 15, reading from verse 1 to 8. Glory to you, O God. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself 
unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. Tonight's meditation is titled, Stay Connected to Jesus. The text is taken from John chapter 15, verses 4 and 5. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, Neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts Find acceptance in your sight, O God, our Redeemer, our Strength, and our King. Brothers 
and sisters in Christ, I begin with an insight of getting electricity connected to our homes. The electricity comes from a distributor. That is the company who owns and maintains all the poles, cables, and wiry bits. It requires a licensed electrical contractor to identify what works need to be carried out. When this connection is done, we can enjoy living in our new homes. Our connection to Jesus begins with a call to repentance. Yet, even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning, when your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Joel chapter 2 verses 12 and 13. God is calling us to trust him at all times, and to pour out our hearts to him, for he is our refuge. As we stay connected to Jesus through prayer, reading and studying the Bible, fellowship with each other, the Holy Communion, singing praises to him, surely we will be lifted out of the mud and mire and our feet will be set on a rock, giving us a firm place to stand. The closer we live to Jesus, that is, staying connected, the better we can discern his will through the power of his Holy Spirit, the more we experience his peace and joy. With Jesus in the vessel, we can smile at and through the storms as we pass through this journey of our life. This is not our final home. Jesus is preparing a place for us. In my father's house, there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. Jesus said to them, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There are bumps in the road ahead, as well as sharp curves, mountains, and valleys. Brothers and sisters, let us therefore continue to stand on Christ the solid rock, for all other ground is sinking sand. The Holy Spirit produces the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 Let us not fight against what we cannot change. Instead, may we rejoice knowing that the Master of Time, who is Jesus, understands our struggles and loves us with an everlasting love. I urge all of us to stay connected to Jesus. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths. 
We pray that your sweet Holy Spirit will be with us always. With our minds on you, the Master, our constant advisor, may we be yours in thought, word, and deed. May we live every day with you, O Master. Consecrate us to your service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let our souls look up with a steadfast hope, and our wills be lost in thine. Rather than dreading the challenges, may we seek to enjoy the adventure of journeying with Jesus throughout all the changing scenes of life. Draw us nearer and nearer to you, blessed Lord. Amen and Amen.
we are saved by trusting. And trusting means looking forward to getting something we don't yet have. For a man who already has something doesn't need to hope and trust that he will get it. But if we must keep trusting God for something that hasn't happened yet, it teaches us to wait patiently and confidently. And in the same way, by our faith, the Holy Spirit helps us with our daily problems and in our praying. For we don't even know what we should pray for nor how we should pray, but the Holy Spirit prays for us with such feeling that it cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows, of course, what the Spirit is saying, as the Spirit is pleading for us in harmony with God's own will. And we know that all that happens to us is working for our good if we love God and are fitting into his plans. Because from the very beginning, God decided that those who came to him, and all along he knew who was going to come to him, that they should become like his son, so that his son would be the first with many brothers. And having chosen us, he called us to come to him. And when we came, he declared us not guilty, filled with Christ's goodness, gave us right standing with himself and promised us his glory. What can we ever say to such wonderful things as these? If God is on our side, who can ever be against us? Since he did not spare even his own son for us, but gave him up for all of us, won't he surely give us everything else? Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own. Will God? No. He is the one who has forgiven us and given us right standing with himself. Who then will condemn us? Is it Christ? No. For he is the one who died for us and came back to life again for us and is sitting at the place of the highest honor next to God, pleading for us there in heaven. Who then can ever keep Christ's love from us? When we have trouble or calamity, when we are hunted down or destroyed, is it because he doesn't love us anymore? And if we are hungry or penniless or in danger or threatened with death, has God deserted us? No. For the scriptures tell us that for his sake, we must be ready to face death at every moment of the day. We are like sheep awaiting slaughter. But despite all this, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us enough to die for us. For I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from his love. Death cannot. Life cannot. The angels won't. And all the powers of hell itself cannot keep God's love away. Our fears for today, our worries about tomorrow, or where we are, nothing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ when he died for us. And now, brothers and sisters, to the one who abides in us as we abide in him, to the one who loves us with a tender mercy that keeps us, to the one who prunes us so that we may grow exponentially to this gracious and loving Savior Jesus Christ, through whom all things can be accomplished, and through whom the prayers of all people in all stations of life are answered to him, we give thanks and praise always and forevermore. And the people of God say, Amen.
Thank you for being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.